Why, why do we understand that in sports? I want you to hear this. Why do we understand in sports the necessity to game plan, and yet with our Christianity, we do not game plan? We just sort of, we just sort of survive, you know? We sit back and we wait on Jesus. In the meantime, Satan absolutely is out trying to destroy us. This message, it will give you knowledge and understanding of, of what's critical to winning life's greatest battles. Listen, Satan prays that you don't hear this message, and Satan prays that if you do hear this message, you go, well, this is all superficial. The pastor made this up. But I'm praying that you're going to give God your full attention today. I want to share with you seven things that Satan prays you don't do or, or that you don't know. The first thing is this. Satan prays that you don't recognize his agenda. Satan prays that you don't recognize his agenda. Jesus is very clear in telling us that Satan has an agenda, which is, which is nothing good, and he has an agenda, which is all good and for his glory. Satan's agenda is to try to steal and hinder and destroy God's plans. Look at what Jesus says in John 10, 10. Jesus said the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now, that's the New Living Translation. Uh, we're not talking about rich in the sense that, okay, well, you know what? If you give your life to Christ, um, you'll win the lottery next week. Okay, we would all love. I tell people I've never bought a lottery ticket, but I am more than willing to buy a winning one. If you know that that lottery ticket is a winning one, I will pay you full price what you paid for it. But you need to hear this. You, you might not get all the riches that this world has to offer, but what you find in Christ gives your life the greatest richness. Everything that God has for you is better than anything that you could come up with. But you have to know you have an enemy. You have someone that every day is, 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 is awake and looking to see if you take him seriously. Listen, not recognizing Satan's agenda, you know what it does to you? It makes you easy prey. You know what Satan does when he looks around? He looks for the people that are very open and gullible. And, and, and those who, who go, well, you know what? We're not in a spiritual battle. I'm trying to live on a cruise ship. I don't want to accept that I live on a battleship. Listen, every day you wake up, you're in a spiritual battle. And just because you don't recognize the battle doesn't mean the battle doesn't exist. A lot of times we, listen, a lot of times we're seeing the effects of what's happening as we allow Satan to wreak havoc in our lives. Listen, not taking Satan's agenda seriously will always, as they say about sin, it'll always cost you more than you ever wanted to give up, and it'll take you further than you ever wanted to go. 2 Corinthians 2.11, I'm reading out of the, 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 the God Word translation. It says, I don't want Satan to outwit us. After all, we are not ignorant about Satan's scheming. Listen, you don't have to live ignorantly about Satan's strategy because God's Word reveals it. So let's jump into that. Secondly, what does Satan try to do? Satan prays that you don't believe in God. Satan prays that you don't believe in God. Satan will do anything he possibly can to lead you to believe that God doesn't exist. And if he can't get you to believe that God doesn't exist, then he will try to get you to doubt the goodness of God and the plans of God and the presence of God. James chapter 2, verse 19 says, You say you have faith. For you believe that there is one God, good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. You know why he tries to keep you from believing God? Because he knows God's real, and he knows that God and Christ are the only opponents that can take him down. Listen, anyone that genuinely claims to be an atheist, I don't mean any offense when I say this, Anyone that genuinely, because sometimes, sometimes people just say, hey, I don't believe in something only because um, their life doesn't line up with their faith, so they would rather disown their faith as far as having conversation about it. 
I've seen that many a time with people. But if a person genuinely claims to be an atheist and they're in their right mind, that person is way more clueless than the devil. Because the devil and even his demons believe that God exists. You know why? Because they know that God is their greatest enemy. Listen, somehow Satan confuses folks that have been, listen, everybody in here, you know what we got in common? You were created by God, all right? You, you, I, I, I didn't ask you who your mother was, your father is. You were created by God. You were created in the image of God. There's a hole in your heart that can only be filled by God. There's a joy you can get only through a relationship with God. And listen, how in the world are you going to come up with the best plans when God created you and the plans? There is no second best. But not only are you created by God, listen, when you walk out your door, you see God's handiwork. You've seen just what I've seen when it comes to God's existence. Scientists may learn a lot of things and know a lot of things, but they have more question marks than they have like exclamation marks. All they can do is be in awe and wonder of how did God do that. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of the God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Romans 1.20, listen to what this says. It says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Listen, it should not be a hard conversation to get in with someone about talking about God's existence. It's too obvious. Okay? The only, only question is, what are you going to do with that? Listen, believing in God, coming into a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, it is the one step Satan hopes to keep you from because if he can hold your soul, he can wreck not just your earthly life, but your eternal life. He wants you and your friends and your family and this world to die and go to hell. God cared so much about that, he sent his son Jesus to die for you so that he doesn't have to live without you. Satan does everything he can to keep a person. It's not just about church. He, just, he, he, he gives people excuses. A lot of people, honestly, the top excuses are not of whether or not they can see that someone greater than them exists. Um, but they just can't get past the stuff that they've dealt with in life. The hand they've been dealt, the people they've seen, maybe even people who claim Christ, who were in churches, who were, were pastors, and yet they did not choose to be trustworthy. But thirdly, Satan prays that you don't believe God's Word. Satan prays that you don't believe God's Word. You know Why? Because if he can't get you to um, doubt God's existence, then he'll get you to doubt the primary truth that you have to live off of. Listen, the Bible is God's, owner man, God's um, owner's manual. It is, it is God's instructions, not just for uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, but basic instructions on how to live on earth. With God. Listen, God's word is the primary way God speaks to us. Therefore, Satan does just what he's always done. He tries to keep us from believing the truth. And if he doesn't get us to where we don't believe the truth, he tries to get us to twist the truth. Since the beginning of time with Adam and Eve, look at what he did in Genesis 3, 1 through 5. It says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, You must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Do you know why you can know the absolute gospel truth of what God wants you to do, and yet you don't do it outside of the fact that you've got a bent towards sin? Is because sometimes we just go, well, it can't be that bad. And sin is always bad because sin hinders your relationship with God. It hinders your peace with God. Uh, because, listen, if you aren't walking with God, you're walking away from God. If you aren't turning to God, you're turning away from God. Listen, Jesus showed us 
this. Write this down. The greatest way to counter Satan's lies, the greatest way to counter Satan's lies is by knowing God's truth. All of my confidence, every ounce of confidence that I have in my faith come from the Word of God. I'm resting what I'm speaking to you even right now in God's Word. It's not my opinion. Listen, right before Jesus started his adult ministry, he spent 40 days fasting, praying, and being tempted by Satan with lies. Look at how he countered Satan's lies and twist of the truth. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the Scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Verse 5 says, Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the Scriptures say, He will order His angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't get hurt on your, you won't hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Verse 8 says, next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. By the way, Satan's always trying to negotiate with you and say, listen, if you go my way, you'll get all this. Even though it's going to lead to emptiness, even though it's going to lead to to nothing but guilt, even though it's going to lead to nothing but unnecessary pain. He says, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. And listen to what Jesus said. It's something we need to say quite often. Verse 10, get out of here, Satan. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. Didn't mean they weren't already taking care of him. But I want you to hear this, that, that when you're dealing with stuff um, and, and Satan's coming at you, either you are open for negotiation or you're not. And either you're standing on, firmly on the truth, because you know what they say, if you, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And that's what happens to people. They're not standing firmly in the truth. Therefore, they easily fall for Satan's lies. So you've got to believe it you got to choose. Everything we do in faith, by the way, is a choice. It's a step of faith, but it's a choice. I choose to trust God. I choose to obey Him. And here's why I do it. If I, even, even if I get to my greatest level of doubt, if I got to choose between my gut and my God, I'm going with God. I'm going with a book, by the way, that has revealed so much that man could never have put together in one book both of of what is and even things that have come about in Revelation. This book is living. It's not just instructions. It's it's life. He says, get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of him. You have to resolve that God said it. You believe it. That settles it. Don't take portions of Scripture that align with you. Take all of Scripture and align with it. That's integrity before God. That's true soundness. John 8, 44, Jesus said this about Satan. He said he's always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. What part of that did you not hear? Satan, he's a liar. He's the father of lies. He's behind every lie. Do you know any time we lie, it's because Satan put us up to it? We agreed with him, but Satan put us up to it. We went ahead and, 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 and any time we live in a lie, it, it, it's, that's not a God thing. God doesn't want you to keep things. I, mean, I see people sometimes, they're going through the fight of their life. You keep everything to yourself. Let me tell you something that I tell my own mama. You better get out that closet you got to get out that closet because, listen, nobody can rescue someone. Nobody can support someone. No one can encourage someone that they don't even know that you're in the fight. Sometimes you need a hand to hold. Sometimes you need a hand to lift you out and, 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 and pull you through. Jesus said in John 8, 32, I don't have it up on the screen, but remember it. 
it, it, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If some of you would just re, would take the truth that you do know and live it and believe it and apply it, your life would change, okay? Um, we live in a world that does not like absolute truth, okay? We like to go, well, times have changed. Guess what? Times may have changed, but the Word of God never has. It never will. At the end of the day, God's going to give you your final report card. All that matters is what he says. But fourthly, Satan prays that you don't stay alert and in tune. Satan prays that you don't stay alert and in tune. Um, I grew up a pastor's son. Um, that's not something you should sit back and say, oh, man, that's great. You need to go, man, he needs extra prayer. Pray for my kids as well. They, got, they deal with the same thing. But um, when I was um, a pastor, um, if, if, if we had revival services, literally even if we had Wednesday night services, which we did every week, and we had a little league ball game on those times, where do you think I was? Where do you think the Baptist preacher's kid was? Church. Okay? Why? Because. That's, that was, uh, listen, in my home, and that's the thing I do appreciate, in my home, God's will and God's plans mattered most. And, I, and the more older you get, the more you appreciate that. Okay? But they had this thing called revival that you used to hear about a lot more. And at revivals, whether it was once a year, twice a year, whatever, weekend, they, their goal was to hope that everybody, including even people that might would have come from the outside community, would become more spiritually awake. All right? Me and my dad talked about this stuff during the last two years of that time before I... He went to be with Jesus 10 months ago. I, we, we would talk a lot about different things. And I said, well, Daddy, um, I'm aiming to try to have revival every week. See, some of you thought you'd just come to a church service. No, you come to revival services. You know, if the baby comes at altar, I won't be shocked today. Um, but I say that to you. Listen, why, why call it words of life if it can't transform? Okay? But the goal of revival... And the goal even right now of this service that you're in is to make you more spiritually alert and in tune, okay? Coming to church doesn't save you, nor does it fix everything, but it keeps you in tune, okay? You got to stay in tune. Look at what Job 1, 6 through 7 talks about where all the devil is. It says, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And listen to what Satan said. Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Listen, this is not a new thing for Satan to be roaming all over the place. You're like, man, it seems like the devil everywhere. No, you just see anymore and you got social media to tell you about it. Okay? A lot of times, I, I listen, I, I, I pump the brakes on social media because I'm like, listen, I, I, I see enough of crazy. I, don't, I can't take no more right now. If I told you there was a lion tied on to the front porch of your house and you only had one way out, which was that front door, other than you braver guys than me that got your shotguns and everything and you think you could take it out, without a gun, what you doing to get out of that house? I can promise you this, if you're in your right mind and sober, you are going to watch every single step. You are gonna, you're going to be at a heightened sense of alert. The Bible tells you that Satan is roaming and roaring and looking for easy prey. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's not trying to discourage you. He's trying to destroy you. He's not trying to just take a little bit of your joy. He's trying to take it all. He's not trying to just attack one person in your family. Trust me, he's coming after every soul that matters to you. That's why you got to pray a little harder and a little more and realize that, hey, again, we're in a spiritual battle, not a physical battle. You can't take that lying down yourself. 
Jesus said this in Matthew 26, 41. He said, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. I've seen this happen with marriages. I've seen this happen with highly successful people or whatever. People think everything's fine, but they leave a crease open and they let their guard down and they aren't in tune. They aren't walking with God. They're just referencing God. That's called religion. They're not walking in a relationship with him. And listen, when you give Satan an inch, he always takes a mile when you leave that one door open that you say well I got everything else in order pastor well what about that one area that you refuse to give over to God and you're just letting Satan just wreak it in your life you need to understand you're human but by the grace of God the only difference between me and somebody in prison is is that I was lucky only reason my marriage is still together well my, my wife considered murder but not divorce I joke about that, but listen, if you've been married sometime, if you don't fight, you evidently hadn't talked. You know, I, I, I finally learned in my marriage, I've been married 24 and a half years, I, I finally realized I just needed to figure out how to fight better, okay? Uh, outside of trying to keep my mouth shut. Me and my father-in-law talked about that, but come on, y'all. Y'all know that's not easy. But I want you to understand all the things that matter most to you and all the people that matter most to you. Satan's planning on coming in and wrecking it all. And you got to get alert. And you got to make sure you don't give him a foothold because if you give him a foothold, he'll take a stronghold. Ephesians 4.27 says, do not give the devil a foothold. In other words, listen, don't give stuff to him. It, 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 this would be like in football if the whole um, team on the defense said, well, hey, Let's all just lay down and let them score. That's, that's what you're doing when you walk out your, your house each day and you're not taking the devil seriously. You're like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just rely on my gut instead of my God. You got to stay in tune, stay in step. Do you know what my top goal is that I do every day of my life? It's not a matter of whether or not I'm going to be a great husband, a great father, a great person, or a great pastor. It's first of all, am I going to stay in tune to the one that gives me strength, the one that gives me peace, the one who aligns my purpose, the one who helps me overcome anything? Because if I don't do that, if I'm not connected to the vine, I don't have the strength and the victory. I can't, I, I'm not prepared. I don't ask God to, to remove all my trials. I ask God to help prepare me for the trials that I know are going to come. But fifthly, Satan prays that you don't wear God's spiritual armor. Satan prays that you don't wear God's spiritual armor. Like a firefighter must wear certain equipment. Otherwise, they shouldn't be running into a blazing a blazing fire. Even then, they're going to try to do that carefully, depending on the infrastructure and all. But listen, you and I must put on God's spiritual armor. Otherwise, we can't be going in these fires. We can't, we can't make it through. We can't do it in our own strength. That's one thing that it takes you a while. For a while in your Christian life, you try to do things for God. And then ultimately, you learn if you mature in Christ, it's not a matter of you doing anything for him. It's allowing him to do things in you, through you, for you, despite you. The spiritual armor that God gives us for spiritual battles are found here in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Listen to it. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. The devil's got strategies, okay? Uh, first of all, he loves to go through your greatest weakness, and he definitely loves it when you just keep an open door. But he also loves it when you don't put on your armor. You know, it's like going out on a boat, and you don't got a life jacket on, but yet you know you, you, something could happen, and you needed that life jacket. You thought the cushion was okay. Look, listen to verse 12. It says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece. Notice that part. Put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will stand and still be standing firm. 
What's the pieces? Verse 14, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, that's the gospel, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. This thing about the fiery arrows, I don't, no matter what your health condition, you need to understand. Satan is shooting his nuclear spiritual warfare at you every millisecond. He is hunting you down. He is looking to see if you let down your guard. He is looking to see if you give up on your faith. He is looking for you to be where you will negotiate with him. Listen, the only way you ground your life is in God's truth. You have to seek God's righteous way of living. Listen, you have to rest in the peace of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that by grace through faith in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection alone, you will not get what your sins deserve, but you will spend eternity in heaven. And listen, you are a child of God, and you are in the hand of God, and nothing can snatch you from him. See, a person who's in Christ, you're not alone. You just sometimes feel like it. You need some Jesus with skin. But it says to, to keep holding on to faith, keep resting things on the gospel, keep praying in the Spirit on all occasions. That's not just when you feel bad, but even when you have no idea what's around the bend. Stay alert, it says. It says keep praying for all the believers. To overcome spiritual attacks, you need spiritual tools. You can write this reference down. I don't have it up on the screen. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. I'm reading out of the, the Message Bible. It says this. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. I want you to hear me. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and you got yourself a copy of the Word of God, you got everything that you need mixed with the Spirit of God to defeat the devil. You don't have to be afraid of him I just said you need to take him seriously because he is greater than you. He's just not greater than him. But number six, Satan prays that you don't fully surrender to Jesus. Satan prays that you don't fully surrender to Jesus. Most people who go to church, which again, at best, even in the southeast, 39% of people go to church anywhere on a, con on a consistent basis, okay? So... 61% are totally uh, either unchurched or they're CEOs, Christmas and Easter only. But I want you to hear this. Most people who do go to church, they reference Jesus as their Savior, but they never make him their Lord. You say, what's the big deal about that? When Satan knows you're still available because you've not resolved your commitment and your surrender to Christ, you're easy prey. Because you live on the fence. See, when you live on the fence, all it takes is a little bit of a push and you over the fence. Luke 9, 23. Jesus said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily. I want you to hear this. You know why Satan loves for us to be lukewarm believers? Because it means we live indecisive. And when you don't decide to do something, you won't do it. Trust me. You do what you decide to do. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Satan loves it when we're proclaiming Christians and yet we still live like the world. Because being lukewarm is worse than being cold or hot. It misleads people. Okay? The worst thing I ever hear from anybody is, and again, I've had it happen at any ministry I've been at, is, hey, I, I'm not coming to your church because I met somebody who goes there. All I can tell you is try not to be that person. Try not to be that person. Try to, and, and by the way, you can't fix every wrong. 
but you can state to them, hey, I was wrong. Please forgive me, and I'm a new person, okay? I want you to hear this. You can't overcome the devil on your own, but in Christ, you can overcome anything he throws your way. Listen to some of these scriptures out of the Amplified Bible. 1 John 3, 8. The one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference, or rebellion is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. But the Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 4.4 4 says, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Don't worry about what you feel or what you see. Understand, you're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from, from victory. You're not hoping to win as my son, my youngest, has said before. He says, Daddy... I'm on the Jesus team, and so I'm always on the winning team. You, you have to get to that point. Listen, you've got to figure out what team you play it on. So, I, I mean, a, again, don't let your faith be dependent upon a church, upon a pastor, upon a, a situation. Your faith needs to be resolved so that your faith goes with you no matter where you go. The spirit that God puts in you is greater than the spiritual attack that will come upon you. Some of you, you're at a breaking point. You go, I can't take anymore, Pastor. God did not say he'd put on you um, only what you could handle, but all that he can handle. In Christ, we're given authority. We don't talk about this enough, but listen, I want you to hear this. In Christ, we're given authority over the power of Satan. Luke 10, 19 says, listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing will in any way harm you. Listen, you got to get to where your God is greater than your greatest fear. And you got to fight it as if everything depends on it and everything depends on him. Don't sit back and say, well, hey, again, my kids are getting older. It's a, it's a different level. I can tell any of you that, that, that have younger kids, trust me, later on you just got another worry. You're like, where are they? What are they doing? And when is the police coming? And here's the thing. Either I can sit back just like with my kids or my marriage or anything else and say, oh, man, that's struggling. Or I can get on my knees and ask God to do something greater that evidently I can't do myself. You see, you, you see prayers answers whenever you stay persistent, by the way. A lot of times people are that close to their breakthrough, but they give up right before the breakthrough. You had no idea. You were one step away. You were in the red zone, and Satan's just going, hey, if I just shake you one last time, maybe you'll fall apart. You don't have to fall apart. Maybe you need to fall down. Get on your knees. Humble yourself before him. Which brings me to the last thing. Satan prays to keep you uh, from the faith. Satan prays that you don't keep the faith. This gets many people, many genuine people. They start out well, but they don't finish strong. Listen, if Satan can keep you from having faith in God and Jesus, if he can't keep you from that, his next goal is to pull you away from, from staying steady in your faith, from living by faith. Listen, many think they're in control when Satan has been busy taking them away from God. I want you to hear this one step at a time. Some of you heard the Casting Crown song years ago. Uh, it's a slow fade. Trust me, the devil is subtle. He is methodical. And you don't fall apart overnight. He takes you step by step as you thought you could float spiritually. You didn't take your faith seriously. You know, mo listen, most people don't take their faith seriously until everything falls apart. And then everything gets back seemingly feeling like it's back together. And then they stray away from that faith. You're not as, as, as honed in on living by faith. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. 
1 Peter 5, 9 says, stand firm against them. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering as you. Satan's not just picking on you. He is picking on all of us. And you don't even need to ask your friends if they're going through a battle because they're in a battle whether they know it or not. Romans 16, 20, it is a scripture I held on to so many times before I ever saw my breakthrough. See, to me, it's a big breakthrough that I'm even up here able to get to do this. Okay? It's a breakthrough to me. Just, just, just not what I can't do, what I can do. This was a scripture I used to meditate on all the time. Romans 16, 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Romans 8, 31 says, What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful? Who can come against us? And last but not least, James 4, 7 through 8, it says, So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and God and the world. How do you get tapped back into to, to having your faith where it needs to be? God's got your full attention. He's got your full surrender. And you're saying, God, lead me. Not just now, but every day, all the way. Satan prays that you don't realize his agenda. Satan prays that you leave later on, and all these are is scriptures that you heard about instead of scriptures that let you understand where Satan's trying to slip in and take you down or take you away from things. Would you bow your heads with me today? Dear my Father God, I'm just praying, Lord, that you spoke despite me and through me what you've given me. And I pray that the people would receive this word. Lord, not as my word, but for straight from your word. It is your voice speaking to them. Lord, you want them to know, Lord, that the, that the battle and the strategies of the devil are, are things that they must take seriously. But Lord, you also want them to know, Lord, that they can still face every battle with confidence, with peace, with victory, Lord. But they've got to put on the full armor of God. They've got to anchor their life in your truth, your word. They've got to, Lord, do everything they possibly can to fan the flame of their faith. Lord, they need to do everything they can, Lord, to resolve in their heart that they are going to follow you, God. They're going to fully surrender. Lord, they, they're going to have your favor and your blessing over everything because they're giving you everything. Lord, not just so that you can give them something. You've already given us everything, God. Eternity in heaven, Lord. Your spirit, your word, your peace, your joy, your hope, your plans, your purpose. But, Lord, no matter what, Lord, I pray that each person listening right now, if you're moving upon their heart, they would decide that though none go with me, I will follow Jesus. They will not negotiate or be open to negotiations any longer to the evil one. But, Lord, right now, they're going to ask your forgiveness. They're going to put their hands in your hands. And, Lord, they're going to let you lead them every step of the way. God, we give you right now what we do feel and see in the battles that are going on in our lives, God. Take it all, God. Reach in as we reach up. God, we pray for those who do not know you as their personal Savior. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would decide, Lord, before they draw their last breath, Lord, that they will trust you, Jesus, as their Savior, as their Lord asking your forgiveness Lord believing in your death burial and resurrection confessing you as their savior and the Lord Lord so that they are secured for the future but Lord they are also empowered to live out your life and purpose in the present and in this life in Jesus name we do pray amen brother DJ is going to lead us in a very very powerful song I'm going to ask you to stand up with us if you will this altar is open i'm available here if you'd like to speak with me or me pray with you but listen don't let anybody around you keep you from going wherever you need to get right now